touch, see, feel, taste, and smell is made of chemicals. Chemicals are the building blocks to life as we know it, and many of the advancements to society and improvements to our everyday lives can be attributed to chemistry. That said, the chemical industry is responsible for about 7% of the world's CO2 emissions. When I was working in the chemical industry, we used a method called life cycle assessment to find ways to reduce these impacts. LCA is a method where you measure the impact of a product across its whole lifetime, including everything from raw material extraction through the end of life. Using this method, we could identify hot spots where making changes to the product design could have the largest impact reductions. So this is great, and the method is there, but the timing is really not ideal. Life cycle assessments are usually very time intensive, and often these studies aren't completed until a product is already on the market. Not only did this make it really difficult for us to keep pace with the rapid product development times for new chemicals, but I also had a really big uphill battle when I was trying to convince management to make changes after they had already invested in R&D, scale up, production, and the marketing for that product. Change at this point in time is painful and it's costly. But right now, that's kind of the only option. You see, during the development of a chemical, very little is known about its life cycle impacts, especially about the release of that chemical during the use phase and at the end of life. So this creates a huge data gap, and at UCSB, we're trying to find a solution. As a researcher in the Chemical Lifecycle Collaborative, we're developing a rapid response online tool that will be able to generate the life cycle impacts for a given chemical with only the reaction kinetics or with the chemical structure. We're doing this by pulling together existing tools and data sets along with new research, including spatial and temporal fate and transport models, including quantitative structure activity relationship models for chemicals, using also machine learning to build more predicted data, and big data platforms and cloud computing. This will provide R&D organizations with a method in which they can screen chemicals before they have to make decisions about investing in scale up. Right now, I'm working with our industry partners to validate our methods and building case studies with companies like Dow Chemical, Unilever, Sherwin-Williams, and Ecolab, among others. Hopefully, by developing these case studies, we'll be able to ensure that this tool is actually useful in practice. I feel that if we can just close some of these data gaps, we'll be able to empower companies to be able to better measure and manage their impacts. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That's fascinating research. Yeah, thank you. So it, the, the life cycle assessment, it, it uh, evaluates the impact of climate change on the manufacturing process. Does so, it also look at finance? Um, there is life cycle cost accounting as well. And um, the impacts that I'm describing, there are hundreds of different impact categories that you can measure using life cycle assessment. So not only are these direct impacts on climate change, like global warming potential, ozone depletion, but also ecotoxicity, human health toxicity, a variety of different things. But there is also life cycle cost accounting that mm -hmm. takes the cost with all of these stages into consideration. So if, if, the, if the cost of carbon were high enough, that would be a, an additional impact to these, these companies as they make their decisions. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thanks again. Thank you.